Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Indie Farm Life. Adam here. Today I got a little surprise, and it's not little and it's not much of a surprise because you can read it in the title of this video, but we now have da -da -da, Cat D4H on site. Just got this here a couple days ago. Um, sadly, it's not ours. We don't own it outright, so it'll only be here for a couple months, but it is family owned, so I'm not renting it, which is nice. But it's an older machine, uh, but the principal use for this cat is going to be to remove a bunch of topsoil, at least the first task, is to remove a bunch of topsoil for the pond we're about to put in. Uh, if you've watched some of our other videos, we kind of alluded to this coming up. So let's give it a little quick once over, and i got to get to work. So just got up here a couple days ago. I uh, don't quite know the year. I'm sure I could pull that if I looked at the serial number. I'm going to guess late 80s, mid 90s, low 90s. Um, but about 25,000 pounds if those of you who aren't familiar with a D4, especially with no cab or no ripper on the back. Um, the family's owned it for I don't know how many years, maybe six, seven years. The machine itself has I think about 12,000 hours on it. Um, just under 100 horsepower. It's a good topsoil machine. Six-way blade's nice, so it'll help us a lot with our finish grading. The farmer down the road is going to do most of the digging for our pond, but this will be the principal machine for cleaning everything up so of course when you first get a new machine or any t anything power tool etc the first thing you have to do is just give it a little test right so i'm going to walk out here and show you my novice dozer skills so i believe that i cut this in in probably 20 minutes 25 minutes really just trying to get a feel for the machine and what it's capable of. I definitely have a lot to learn as far as how to make it most efficient, but we'll get there. And obviously I went too deep here in some, in some places, but it just takes time. I'll tell you, for the age of this machine, it's been really well cared for. The other day this thing started right up just as good as my tractor would, and obviously it's a little older and it's got a few more hours on it. It'll probably make a liar out of me now. Like I said, pretty solid machine. We'll walk over here and kind of map out the game plan for the day. So as you're watching, if you see the orange stakes floating around, those are the boundary markers for the pond, so everything on the inside of that has to go. I've already created this massive pile of topsoil here that I need to do something with. And I think the general idea is to get all the topsoil down in that corner. You can see that it kind of falls down that way toward a ravine. And long term, I'd love to re-slope that so the water comes back this way to help feed the pond. So that's probably where I'll stockpile it for the time being.
sorry for not showing you everything. I'd rather get my practice pushes out of the way before you guys have to watch, but I'm gonna try to clean some of this up, maybe level it out as best I can, as best I can. It may not be level, ultimately. And then move on to a new section. All right, so I've been at it for half hour or so, and I'm definitely an amateur, novice, whatever you want to call it. I haven't run a bulldozer since I was probably 12 or 13 years old. So for anyone out there who runs machine for a living, for a living, uh, don't laugh at me too much. So I'm starting to stack up a decent pile of topsoil here behind me, and you can see here to the left of the dozer kind of what it looks like out there. I'll walk out there in a second. So initial observations, it's awesome. But it definitely takes some getting used to. I tell you, it's amazing how big that dozer is weight-wise versus the backhoe and tractor around here. But even that thing, it's still not quite big enough. You know, if you don't have the blades square and you're ripping, ripping topsoil, it'll definitely turn that dozer and pull it sideways, all 25,000 pounds of it. But my cut's looking pretty good. At least I think so, as I about fall down. Like I said earlier, uh, the key here really is to try to save a lot of this topsoil so that we can have it for around the house, around the pond, etc. Because I'm not paying someone for topsoil down the road, so as opposed to having all the topsoil get carted off as part of the dig for the pond, I'd like to at least stack it up. I'll take some video now of uh, me actually getting some, hopefully some work done. and won't look so silly. I might try to do a fresh cut right through there between those trees. I'm gonna save some of these trees for the time being. We might transplant some of these smaller guys. So I was just listening to the radio and there's a, apparently the heat index is 111 today. We're going to put this thing through the paces, see if it's uh, going to hold up or not. I think so. It's doing, doing some pretty good work. Unfortunately, I got to get out of here relatively soon, so it's about all I have time to do today. 
I'll walk up here and spin around and kind of show you guys what I've got done so far. Starting to get the hang of it, but uh, many more seat hours are going to be necessary to wrap this up. So now this is at the far end of the pond. As you can see, I got there's a marker stake there. However, well, there's a tree in the way. However, the pond goes. I don't even think you can see it at the farthest stake, but about 25 or 30 feet this way of that far tree line. So, got a good amount to clear. Hopefully, I'll be back out here tomorrow if the rain holds off. Let me kind of give you a full view here of what's done. I like that dozer. I mean, I would like any dozer, I guess. I don't have a dozer, so. It's a decent start, I'd say. I would say it's a third of the way done. Then I gotta figure out how to move all this. Maybe I'll leave it there and let the farmer move it with his massive 30 ton dumper and excavator. Well, I got a decent amount done there in a couple hours. Uh, a couple things. I love the power shift transmission. That thing just doesn't give up. It, it doesn't feel like it's gonna break like a hydrostatic would when you push into something. That thing just keeps chugging through. If you're in second and you're pushing, you put it into first, you just find more power. It's amazing. You end up losing traction before you would feel any strain on the transmission. Uh, number two, when you're operating with the canopy, uh, make sure you also still sunscreen your knees and your legs because mine got torched. Uh, but other than that, it's a pretty good day. I'll probably be back out here tomorrow. Need to figure out my fuel situation. I think it's like a 50 gallon tank on that thing. And I haven't run it dry by any means. I'd say it's probably at least halfway full, but not gonna be carting that in with five gallon totes. So I uh, need to run out and get the 55 gallon drums filled up at some point too. So 50% chance of rain tomorrow. So who knows whether I'll be out here or not. But if I am, I'm sure there'll be another video about it and uh, you guys get to see what's going on. So appreciate you guys stopping by and checking out the new dozer with me. It's gonna be on site for, like I said, a couple more months and then we'll be digging this pond and all kinds of fun stuff happening. So hit that subscribe button. Hope you like this video and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Take care.